Winter is coming, to quote a very popular TV show, but I might have a solution to that. Automating your home is a fun thing, but let's face it, we all hope that we're gonna save just a little bit of money here and there. Now, I already broke down how much would you save if you wanted to automate your lights, and if you're interested, if that's really saving you any money. And there's a video covering this topic. In this video, we're gonna focus on these. These are TRVs, thermostatic regulator valves, uh, which are Zigbee connected and work with Tuya and Nodred, obviously. But first things first. Now, when it comes to heating, well, I'm probably stuck, like many of you, with a very old heating system, which, well, to bring it back to the 21st century would be quite expensive. So I started to automate it, and the version 1.0, well, introduced a very cheap upgrade, which was basically a son of attached to my thermostat, and thanks to Nodred, I was able to link it with Alexa or Google Home. It might not look very impressive, especially that is at the entrance, and three years on, it's still in the same state, but it works flawlessly. But I've been busy over the last couple of years introducing more and more features, and in my last year, DIY Smart Heating version 3.0, I've introduced per room control. Now, I couldn't do much because well, my heating is actually quite old and I can't control uh, radiators individually, but I was able to set individual set points for each room. And this is where these are coming in. Now, these are most uh, TRV Zigbee based thermostats that's attached to your radiator. These work by attaching to your radiator's valves and driving pin up and down to open or close your valve. Just bear in mind you have to have a compatible valve types. They support uh, six different valve types which I'm going to list in here and come with adapters. Now there is a problem with this upgrade because it's going to be quite expensive. I have at home 11 different radiators. In my case it's going to be even more expensive. Apart from getting 11 of those, I only have two, unfortunately, so the actual installation will have to wait until the shipment of nine will arrive in a couple of weeks. Uh, I will have to buy compatible valves for the radiators as well, setting me back additional five to ten dollars, depending where I'm going to source them. So that's in total right now about twenty-five to thirty dollars or thirty-five dollars per radiator. Now you might be thinking, is it worth actually going through all that trouble with me having 11 radiators and the fact that I'm not going to perform the radiator draining myself, uh, that upgrade will amount to almost $500, if not more. But looking back at my gas bills, I realized that from October to April, which is pretty much where you use the heating in UK, I've paid over £420, which is quite a lot. Add to that the fact that this winter gas prices are expected to go up even up to 20% and you are looking at very desperate person looking to save some money using home automation. And I know what you're gonna say, I'm probably doing it all the way around, I should start with modernizing my boiler. But there is a catch there as well and there is a reason why I'm starting with home automation first with the boiler to follow at some point. Now my boiler is 30 years old and you probably guessed it it's not the most efficient boiler it was built for the purpose but as previous owners added extensions and into bathrooms well this boiler is no longer capable of producing enough heat to heat up the home effectively this means in order for me to actually upgrade the heating system and change the boiler i would have to mount a much bigger unit which won't fit in the kitchen that means that the boiler itself would have to move to garage, which is, you guessed it, behind that wall in there, which amounts to basically redoing the kitchen. The optimistic quote was around five to seven thousand pounds with the boiler itself, and that left me with 11 of these and me trying to figure out if I can curb with the waste of the heat in the rooms that I barely use. So the plan is simple. I already have a system that is able to track individual changes in rooms and set individual set points. 
Now, along the way, I promise I'm gonna update that thermostat as well so it no longer scares visitors, but I want to install these and make sure that only rooms that I'm interested in getting some heat. That will speed up the process of heating up individual rooms and also prevent the waste of the heat as long as I remember to close the doors. I went for these Moe's uh, Tuya TRVs for a couple of reasons. They are pretty clever on their own. I wouldn't call them smart, but they are able to figure out what to do with your radiator in that specific room. They have a temperature sensor built in alongside the offset, so you could um, uh, calibrate the temperature next to your radiator and control the heat in the room itself. There are timers for weekdays, Saturdays and Sundays, and you'll be able to set up to four timers per day. Also, a holiday feature which pauses the heating for several days and resumes when needed, a boost setting just in case you want to heat up a room really quickly, and they're clever enough on their own to detect when the window is open. And all of that is available on every single thermostat. I mean, as long as you can get through the interface of three buttons, because there's lots of settings and only three buttons to control them. Now, there is a nice display that displays all the options, but you'll have to have a bit of patience to set all of these things up using those three buttons provided on the unit. Now, things get much easier if you actually take advantage of the Zigbee Hub in Tuya ecosystems and connect them to Tuya. That way you can use the Tuya app to actually set all those settings easily and control your heating via cloud. Apart from automation tab, Tuya doesn't really add anything specific to these thermostats. You're only gonna get uh, granted access to controlling this remotely and setting all your automation policy in the scenes or automation tab in the app. But because it's Zigbee, it's a pretty decent fallback option. And why this is a backup option? Well, obviously, because I've mentioned it at the beginning of the video, I'm going to do it myself using custom Zigbee coordinator and control this via Node-RED. Connecting these TRVs was very simple. Just press the minus button for three seconds and within a couple of moments, the device was paired with my custom coordinator and Zigbee 2 MQTT. Now the device is already fully supported, so you don't have to do anything beyond that. And you can start sending and receiving payloads uh, using your custom coordinator. Once paired and added to Zigbee 2 MQTT, it's gonna provide you with everything you need about this thermostat. So you can look it up in here, this is a typical payload uh, containing all the options, including even uh, programmatic settings or calendar settings for programming this on weekdays, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Here I've rigged up a very simple node red. It literally took me about five minutes to get this composed a dashboard that uh, displays the current temperature, controls the set point and uh, gives you information about the programmatic settings. So as soon as I adjust anything in here, you'll notice that those are gonna be updated on my thermostat. In order to send these updates, all you have to do is just really submit a payload, which is very similar to what, uh, what values are being submitted uh, back from the uh, thermostat. So for example, if you want to change the current uh, set point to another value, all you have to do is just to do this. Let's say grab inject node, select it JSON, because that's how you should format it, set it, uh, let's say, to 21 degrees, and complete the formatting. So you would. Every time you want to send a new setting to your thermostat, uh, all you have to do is just use the set uh, topic uh, for your Zigbee to MQTT and submit that JSON uh, with a new value. Now there are some um, values that you cannot control, uh, it's impossible to do it, and I've listed them on my website, so if you scroll up there, you'll see that the uh, entire payload is in here with values highlighted. Those are the values that you can actually change. Those are uh, the values that are not highlighted, you won't be able to, to change them directly. If you want to download this and give it a quick go, this is also available on my website. So just uh, go through the description of this video and you'll be able to download this sample. Submitting commands to the device itself allows you to change some of the settings. And here comes the biggest, probably hindrance, because it's not really gonna stop me from doing anything. You can't actually control the valve position. 
In the device payload, there is a setting that is responsible for reading the pin position, but there is no way of actually setting this to your liking. So all the automation of this individual thermostat will have to be done through the set point. You can select different set points and as such, you can force the device to drive the pin. It's not ideal, but as long as you're going to calibrate the internal temperature sensor correctly, it should work just fine. I am already working on the next iteration of my smart heating system. Now, it's going to be a couple of weeks because I'm still waiting for the remaining nine to arrive to my house. I could actually mount them, but while I have these two, I can start playing and testing things out. So if this is interesting, in the description of this video, you're going to find a link to this particular thermostat. They sometimes are uh, hard to find in stock, but I think they're worth it. Now, you can already start building your own uh, DIY smart heating. I already have a V3 version available online, so check it out in the article. It's going to be linked in there. And if you want to see how much money I could save by using this, if any, and if that's going to work at all, uh, then you know how YouTube works. I don't have to explain you that, but if you want to get that update when the video is out, use the YouTube tools provided to keep in touch. Also, I would strongly recommend you to use uh, my social media to get in touch and follow me there because I often share random snippets or about the projects I'm working on. As for now, guys, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.